Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Got date problems? Kind of like got milk, right? If you got date problems after a recent switch maybe to the ISO date standards, well, I'm gonna show you what one of the most common problems I see is with people working with dates, especially beginners. This one's for you beginners. And I'll be honest, I made this exact same mistake for years when I first started using Access Databases. For years I did this. I'm still finding spots in my database from years ago that I did this. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. All right, today's question comes from Landon in Sandy Springs, Georgia, one of my Platinum members. Let's see what Landon has to say. We're gonna try this voice synthesis one more time. We'll see, we'll see if we can get Sammy to warm up to it. Hi, I recently switched my database to use ISO date formatting, as you instructed in one of your videos, and now some of my queries and VBA code aren't functioning as they used to. I am uncertain about what's causing the issue, but it seems that my methods of handling dates are no longer yielding the correct results. For example, query criteria no longer work. Could you help me identify the problem and find a solution? I don't know, what do you think? I'm still, I'm still on the fence myself as far as using this, uh, this voice synthesis thing goes. But, uh... I might as well give them a plug while I'm at it. It's a site called SpeechMite. You just basically copy and paste it in here. You can pick any kind of a voice you want, what language you want, what country you want, and then it gives you samples down here, right? Like this one. Welcome to SpeechMite, where your words transform into... Right. It's pretty cool. I like it. I don't know if I'm going to keep using it or not. What do you guys think? Anyways, Landon's problem is a problem that I had myself, like I said, and I see it come from a lot of people. And the problem is the way that he's handling the dates in his system. Now, one of my missions in life is to get everyone in the world using the ISO date format. It's year, month, day, just like this, all right? It's universal. Everybody can understand what it means. Computers work great with this because this is the best way to sort dates, right? Year first, then month, then day. Month, day, year is silly. If anything, I like the, the European uh, style day, month, year. That makes more sense, but this makes the most sense. So one of my missions is to get everyone to switch to this. I switched this myself a couple of years ago. It's 2025. I think I switched back in 2022. But the problem is, is if you have an access database or even Excel spreadsheets or any of that stuff where you've been relying on a specific format to work in your database, then you might have to retool those formats and change things around the way you're working with the database. All right, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab up my website if you want to. Now in here, I've got a customer table and in my customer table, I've got a field called customer sense. As you can see, I've switched my system over to ISO dates. It's something that you change at the windows level and then anywhere you have a short date, which is the default date setting in access or even in other programs, it'll, it should appear like this unless that program specifically overrides it. Now let's make a query. And I am going to, for the purposes of class, I'm going to reformat that date and make it look like a USA formatted date. All right, so I'm just going to bring in the customer ID. I'm going to bring in customer sense. And then I'm going to make a new field over here. I'm going to call it USA date colon. I'm going to use format, which is what a lot of people do. I'm going to format that customer sense field as mm slash dd slash yyyy. All right, I will zoom in so you can get a better look at that. All right, that's what I'm formatting the customer sense as using format. People do this all the time. There's nothing wrong with this as long as it's the final step in your uh, procedure. All right, only use the format function to do this to display that date the way you want to display it. All right, don't use it in your queries. Don't use it in your calculations, right? If the boss wants to see this format or any other specific format, that's fine display it that way on whatever form he works with or on whatever report you have to generate, but don't rely on this format for stuff inside your database. I'm gonna save this as, let's just say this is Q1, whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, now the first thing you can see here is there's my date in that format. Notice how the date here lines up on the left side of the column, where over here the date is lining up on the right. Remember, numeric values, which include auto numbers, date values are numeric values, right? Numbers, currency values, those all line up on the right side, unless you specifically change their format. 
text values line up on the left. So this should be the first thing right here telling you that that's not 100% right. Okay, something's up with this. It's formatted as a date, but it, it's actually a text string. Now, Access can still kind of work with this. All right, there's still stuff you can do, but here's the thing. Here's the next step that people take, all right? I'm going to say, all right, let's say you need to get the year off of that. And again, I'm guilty of this myself. All right, I'm gonna call it Y, and I'm gonna get the right characters from USA date, that's the field I just made, comma four. All right, and again, I'll zoom in so you can see that better, all right? Y is the right characters from USA date, comma four. Give me the four rightmost characters from that. Run it, and there you go. And that looks normal. That looks perfectly fine, but look, it's on the left-hand side. It's a text string. It's not an actual year, okay? It's not a number. Now, Access is actually pretty good at dealing with this if you do treat it like a number. Like, if I come in here, if I say a, a Z is going to be Y plus one, that should actually work, and it does work, and it actually converts it to a number because Access can do something called on-the-fly type conversion. It looks at this and says, well, you're trying to take a string value and add a number to it. Is this string actually a number? Yeah, okay, we can do it. We'll, we'll let you do it this time, but it doesn't always work. So don't rely on it, okay? And the problem is, is people now, they have this year thing here and they think that that's a number they can work with as a, as a number and it's not, it's, it's text and it won't always work like a number. And this becomes evident if you've got this formatted year here and let's say we try to put some criteria on it, right? Like greater than or equal to begin date. This is called a parameter query. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some links to some videos to explain some of this stuff, all right? This normally says, all right, the user can type in the begin date and it will then give me all the dates after that. If I run that, it's gonna ask for begin date. Let's go one, one, 2000. And uh, no, it's no, it's not working. It's giving me 1955s, 1987s, but it's also missing a bunch of dates. It's missing everything from January through October. What's going on? <laughs> Well, the problem is it's treating it like text, okay? So if you have, you know, usually this happens like in an earlier query, right? Like let's say you've got, this is Q1, right? This is our query one, let's get rid of that. Save this, all right? Now I'm making another query based on that query. So I'll bring in Q1 and then I bring in my formatted date, right? And then I run it. Okay, there's all my dates. Looks good, they look like dates, all right? Now in here, I put in greater than or equal to begin date. And then I run it. And this is this is the exact problem that they had, by the way. I had Landon send me some screenshots and yep, this is exactly what's going on. You type in one, one, 2000, and it does a text-based comparison to those two things. All right, so that's not the way that you do it. And like I said, I'm guilty of this myself. In my, in my first couple databases, I used to always use, you know, give me the right four characters to, to represent the year. And that is not good. You don't do that. So what do you do? Well, like I said earlier, only format the date in a different way like this where you're displaying it, but that's it. Don't rely on this for any, any other kind of numerical data, okay? And if you need to get the year, don't use the right function, use the year function. Why is the year of customer sense? There's a year function, there's a month function, there's a day function. Right now that's an actual year. And look at that, it's lined up on the right side of the field. Okay, and if you wanna put your criteria here, put it on an actual date field, greater than or equal to begin date, like that. Okay, now, do you have to always type in your date in the right format? No, one, one, 2000, it should still work. Access is pretty good about knowing what type of data you're typing in. It got all the right dates, okay? You can still type it in in the in the normal ISO format. That should get that. There you go. Okay, that is regional, I believe. Though if you're in um, if you're in Europe and your your regional settings are set to European, you know UK, whatever, it's gonna go uh, day, month, year. It, it, it matters because if you if you type in one you know one two two thousand. Is that January 2nd or is that February 1st? See, that's that's why this this format is dumb. That's why the best format is 2000 
01, 02. Now, you know exactly that that's the year 2000. The month is January. The day is the second. And you run it, and you get the right value. And that's why I'm a big proponent of the ISO date format. And that is why you only put your, you only use the format function at the last step, all right? Either in your reports or in the form of the user has to see it and they want it a specific way. Everywhere else you use these functions and you don't use format, you don't use left and right. Don't treat it like a string. All right, here's some other videos for you to watch. Here's the format property and function. Here are those string functions, right? Left, right, mid. Okay, learn these. These are definitely good, but don't use them for dates. Here's my video on query criteria. That's this thing down here. That's a criteria. And specifically, having it where the user can type in their own criteria, that's called a parameter query. All right, parameter query. Learn more about this. Well, I cover this, all this stuff in my beginner classes, by the way. This is all beginner stuff. If you do want to take a piece of that date, there are separate functions for year, month, and day. Use those. You can separate a date out into any of its components. There's tons of different date functions. You can see I cover lots of them in you know, Beginner 5, Expert 27, Expert 28. I spend lots and lots of times on date stuff. In fact, I have an entire seminar called the Date Time Seminar where I cover pretty much everything there is to know about working with dates. We calculate work days between two, you know, if it's like, you know, January 1st and January 7th, how many work days are between there, all kinds of stuff. Holidays, recurring appointment, you name it. If it has to do with dates, it's in this seminar. I'll put a link to it down below. Check it out. But uh, there you go. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. I wish I would have had this video back in like 1994 when I was starting working with Access. Uh, save myself some time and some headache. But that's going to do it, folks. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an access database. You'll find links to the Diamond Sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it.
And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.